is up everybody welcome to the burn down youtube channel we are still out here at the machine shop finished up last night we got the motor long block so i feel good about life but now we're turning our attention to the oil pan right so this is a swap fake holly pan it's an ss pan whatever that means and it's not the super shallow guy up front so it is more shallow here right so and also uh i was talking to ryan and you know once you have a problem you start paying attention to things because if you just bolt everything together and put your swap pan on put all your stuff in your car works and you're fine why would you pay attention right and this car i don't remember when i swapped this because i did have a real holly pan and and then i think i ended up just giving it to a buddy because he needed a pan and i was like oh i got this i can get this other one and um i'm not sure where the oil trouble started but i originally ran a, a real holly pan so he was like hey have you paid attention to the oil passages and i was like no so we took the stuff off and you look down and i don't know if you can see that but that hole is kind of blocked off like they drilled down and stopped and then this one is okay you know but i was like huh so then you flip it over on this passage here on this side and it just goes right into the back of that so is the port big enough i'm gonna say yeah this is probably okay but that is an easy way to just kind of open that up and help with uh flow it's not gonna help pressure but that would definitely help volume granted this one's a little ugly too so maybe we can kind of get down in there without trying to mess stuff up but i'm actually going to open that thing up I'm going to get my Pete Harold on over here and, and clean that up. Is that going to fix everything or make stuff better? Eh, probably not. Is it going to make me feel warm and fuzzy inside? You bet. So uh, we're going to do that portion. And then I'm going to put a temperature sensor. Because now I would like to keep track of my oil temperature uh, as we're doing the drag and drive events to make sure we're not breaking the oil down and all that stuff. It's just more data, more stuff to worry about really but i think i'm going to drill and tap on this side here uh, kind of above this for oil temp is my plan i think and then other than that like i said we'll just clean this up maybe touch that a little bit and just kind of get the edges out of there clean that guy up that whole that all stuff looks sufficient for the most part really like i said maybe just touch that but that guy i should be able to open that up pretty good because there's a bunch of meat on the back side obviously yeah i don't even think i could drill through to that so we'll just gingerly do that um and then the other thing i want to show you guys when it comes to motor building and all that fun stuff the easiest way to succeed is just, just leave things alone i'll be honest with you you know you do a crank and you do weird stuff and it changes sizing of things and then you start modifying stuff and i'm not sure which go around we modified this but i just cut it with a can opener slap the thing on it was probably just a four inch grinder i'm like okay cool it, it has room now it works and if you look close like i have a booger right here and who's to say i didn't have another booger there that maybe came off and then rolled around and this would that would fit through the oil pan pickup that would get pumped through the motor and this is steel this would definitely do damage uh, to bearings so who's to say i didn't have some little chingadera boogers that fell off there so yeah if you're gonna do dumb stuff like that I mean, it's fun to do it all willy-nilly, but until it bites you, it's not. So I'm actually going to file that down, make sure those edges are smooth. We don't have any boogers that are going to fall off. <clears throat> Will that booger stay on there? Maybe. Probably. But if it fell off, you're going to have an issue? Maybe. Probably. So again, I'm trying to save myself future. I'm trying to help future Dane. That's what we're doing. We're helping future Dane today. We're going to pay a little attention. We'll do that. Uh, we will Pete Harold this and make it nice, nice, hopefully not do anything stupid and punch you like i said i'm just trying to <clears throat> round this out and then um we will drill and tap for a sensor so we have oil temperature sensor i'm gonna get another coffee so my voice sounds normal and i can talk Whew. okay that looks much better and we clean that up a little bit so i feel better about it again it's gonna make a difference i don't know i'm sure it helps with flow but it probably wasn't you know a giant problem but Let's move on to this. This is a low dollar motorsports temperature sensor. I got a couple of them. 
So we're gonna try these out. So I'm just gonna, this pan is thick enough. I'm just gonna drill and tap it. You know, we got enough meat, I believe, to hold this chingadera in there. And I did myself a favor and bought a bit that's new and the correct drill bit for the tap. And I'm gonna try to keep these together. Like I'll put a piece of tape or something around it. So when it's in my drawer and I'm like, man, I need an eighth inch MPT, boom, gotcha. I don't have to go hunting for a drill bit that's close or good enough. Like we'll just try to leave these dogs together. But let me pick a spot and I looked under the car and I think above this, but then I've got some webbing here. So we gotta be high enough on this side. I think is gonna be the jam. Um, obviously you got action flex plate, all that stuff going on here. And then I don't know, I guess on this side we have other stuff, sensors and things. I don't know, maybe we go this side. Now I'm bummed I didn't pay more attention when it was in the car because we go this side of the motor. I have the, uh, the other sensors and I should be able to come up. Maybe we'll do that. I'll just pick this side. We'll go down here. And then hopefully I'll crawl into the car real quick and see if there's anything that would be interfering. And then worst case, the nice thing is it's 8th inch MPT, so if we screw up, I can just put a plug in it. It's not the end of the world. So, yeah, let's make an executive quick audible decision, and we'll go this side, and then I don't have all that to worry about. So, let's do it. So we drill and tapped our hole. I just eeny, meeny, miny mode it. I didn't want to be at the very bottom, but I didn't want to be too high. So, you know, I figured toward the middle would be fine. Have a little probe guy that goes in there. Life should be good. So we'll tighten it down and put a little dab of silicone behind it. And it's just another thing I need to watch out for when installing the motor, hopefully. But last thing on the list that I want to do, and I think that we'll just keep this video kind of short and we'll just pertain to this oil pan because people were asking and I didn't have the answer. It was like, how many quarts does the thing hold? So let me get a measurement. I think I can put a dipstick in the block, kind of measure down, find where the fill line is. And what I did on my dipstick, if you watched the previous video, is I calibrated it, right? I had way too long of a dipstick. So we were running this pan, uh, not at capacity. So I emptied everything out. I put six quarts in, and then where it registered on that dipstick is where I marked it. So I know that that's six quarts, but I want to see what six quarts actually looks like. So let's go steal a scientific measuring device, which would be my wife's uh, Pyrex measuring cup. We'll see if we can sneak it out of the house. She's probably gonna, hopefully she doesn't catch us. But um, I think it has quartz on there and then we can just put water in this thing. We'll kind of level it up and you and I will see. And then like I said, I'll get a measurement on the dipstick in the block. So we kind of have an idea of how far down in the pan that looks. So, I mean, if I put six and a half in or whatever, and it's not like up in the windage tray, it's not terrible. I want to get as much oil in this baby uh, as possible. So let's go on our mission to get the Pyrex. We made it out alive. I thought about bringing like an ice pack or something, but she did catch us. So I got the plastic one, but it still has measurements on there. So we should be good. Uh, <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? Anyway, we bolted this down got her in the block and then i marked right where the edge of the rail is right here so we'll pull it back out and then i can get a measurement by sticking this on the side again sorry i'm not bill nye but this is as close as we're going to get so we have a ballpark so we'll pull it back out measure on the dipstick to see where that line would end up being and then that'll give me an indication of how far down from that rail uh, the oil was so let's do that and then we'll find out and then we can start putting fluid in there and figure out if we can add more or less or how the how the game kind of works what's going on inside there so we got the old stick out let me see if i could see my mark somewhere on here uh, where are you mark aha so my mark is there so pull this guy out kind of simulate that's why i said this is you know this is let's call it pseudoscience right gotta take dude around hold dude da -da -da -da. so 
so yeah we're like so the mark to that pan is way up here right my dipstick mark for six quarts is way down here so yeah that this is the edge of the pan so we still have a ton of room so let's put some fluid in there and uh see how that goes so it seems like we could probably be okay with more fluid than six quarts oh geez we're not even gonna attempt that let's pour fluid in here okay dane nye reporting here so we've got six quarts of agua and then i've got an additional quart here so let's just dump this in see where that kind of levels off i've got my self leveler over here so we'll kind of get it as best we can but ultimately we're just going to get a good idea all right let's hope this pour goes well for science Not sure if I tighten my oil drain plug, so that could be exciting. Well, or if this thing decides to do that. Who knows? Yeah, six quarts is a bit more than I thought. Woo! Stay. Okay, well there you have it. Granted, we are not level, I don't think. I think we're up a little in the front. So you can see the, the water level. So this needs to level level down, but we're here, right? So this is the bottom rail. I think your windage tray is pretty well. Let me mess with this and see if I don't spill it all over the table and then bring the front down so it's so we're more level. So you can see how the you know gap here. I guess obviously technically though. It's designed at an angle to keep oil in the back, right? So maybe we'll just say that's good enough. So let's see. Damn, we're almost at the rails. I feel like that's kind of max max capacity. And then your windage tray. I mean, this guy. You are only... Oh, I was going to grab my tape measure that's holding up my oil pan. Let me see if I get another one. I know I have another one somewhere. Where are you, tape measure? All right, technical difficulty. Let me find my other tape measure. Okay, we're going to correct things before I get roasted if you've already commented. Hopefully this answers it. I was measuring this. Well, I wasn't measuring where it bolted to like a big dummy. Right, I was measuring the bottom of the block. Well, you can see the bolt is taller than here. So I redid my measurements. This bolt is about a half inch, right? Or this nut, I should say. This nut's about a half inch deep. And from there to, so this is half inch deep, right? And then from here to there is about a quarter. So if you go from here down till it's the bottom of the crank, it's about an inch from the, the surface, right? Where the pan mates to just the top, like this would just skim the oil. You got about one inch. So that means from this edge here down, you've got about one inch, right? Well, we were measuring an inch and a quarter to the oil so that probably gives you room for whatever right room to party and then i dumped in uh, water till it got right to like the one inch mark right so you can see boom we're right about the one inch mark so that is almost seven quarts not quite so in conclusion six and a half is probably the magic number so however you keep track of that half would be like the variance um and then it's not technically on the crank obviously when you launch the crank might start kind of spinning it but i think even if you had normal oil in there depending depends on how much it sucks out while it does it but i want to have the max amount of oil possible so let me know in the comment section what you would do i think i'm going to shoot for six and a half i know that those two dots are six quarts and then you just poop Put a little halfer in there and then i'll feel better about life and then i've got at least a quart um in the the old canister rue down there so that guy so hopefully we'll have over seven quarts in the system technically so sorry for my mistake on my measuring again this is uh, dane nye the science guy super scientific channel over here let me know your opinion on that what you guys think 
on this and then you can comment on the measuring of how far out i am if i'm a dummy or whatever and grand yes there's better measuring tools than this guy but we'll ball we'll we're ballparking over here you know so let me know till next time i'm out